G'day, this is my TSR-80 uh, Model 1 with Level 2 Basic and for Tandy, I decided today that we would just write a simple basic game in basic. So the game that I've written is Snake and I'm using the four arrow keys to control the movement of the snake and the code's written in basic, there's no machine code or assembler, it's just all running in basic. So. I'm just going to run the program now and then later we'll go through the actual code and then you might have some suggestions or enhancements that we could make um, to improve our game of snakes so let's run it and there it goes okay it's drawn the board up okay and now as soon as i press one of the arrow keys there we go and okay down across 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 whoa i almost got it there okay up and as you can see, it's a perfectly playable version of Snake. Okay, it's, ah, okay, I just hit the edge. Ah, let's play a game. Okay, and there we go. Oops, and across. Yeah, the arrow keys are a little bit awkward to use on a TS-80 Model 1 just because of the way they have laid out. And I like the fact that they've actually got the, the arrows on them, so they indicate that they control the direction of our snake. Oh, oh down. Okay, we'll just end it there. And then we'll go through the code and we'll see if you have any suggestions or any comments you want to make. Okay, here we go. Okay, let's take a look at the code for our game of Snake. Okay, the first few lines from 100 to 120 are just some remarks. And then at 140, we're clearing the screen. And then at 160, we're just printing Snake on the screen. And then at 170, we're initializing two values, which are both integers, which are P and Q. P will be used for the current key press of the arrow keys, and Q is going to store the previous value and we've just initialized those to zero for now then we're initializing s at 200 which is going to be used to store our score and then at 220 we're setting the start position for our snake which is x and then at 230 we're setting the start position y for our snake okay let's move on to the next piece of the code in this part of the code, we're setting up our game area and we're just drawing some borders and we're leaving a little bit of space at the top of the screen so we can display some text. So we've set up just two for loops to draw the X and Y borders of the display. And then we're just displaying ready at location one and then we're setting at 340 our start position for our snake. Okay, in this section of code, we're scanning the arrow keys and we're introducing a slightly more advanced function, the actual peak, which lets us look at this memory location, which stores the actual value of the arrow key that's pressed. And we're using the four arrow keys and we're then setting, if we're going up, we're setting Y minus one and then we're going to line 500. If you've selected left, which gives us a value of 32. We're subtracting one from the X value, then going to 500. And then for down, which returns 16 on the arrow keys, if that is pressed, we're adding one to the Y value, then we're going to 500. And then if you've pressed the right arrow key, the P value will be set to 64. And then we're incrementing the X value by one, and then we're going to line 500. If none of those four arrow keys were pressed at 460, we're returning to 360 and we're checking again the p value or, or getting the p value from the memory. And we're also setting the p value to the q value if the p value is zero, and that is at 370. And that's what allows the snake to continue moving in the direction of the last key pressed. So if no key is actually pressed, 
the snake will continue to move in the direction of Q. Okay, in this piece of code, we're detecting if there is a collision with either the border or with a cell that the snake has already moved to in the past. And to do that, we're using the point function. So we're just testing the X and Y value. And if it is any other value than zero, there has been a collision. And when there is a collision, line 500 will go to line 610. If there is not a collision at line 530, we're going to set or draw the new XY position and we're going to increment the score by one, which is at line 540. So S equals S plus one increments the score by one. At line 550, we're printing out the score. At line 560, we're just setting Q to the current value of P. And that's used to allow the snake to continue moving if no new P value is set when we go to the peak um, at line 360. Okay, at line 600, um, we just have a quick remark where the game has now ended. And then at 610, we're printing out the score and we're allowing you to uh, play a game by pressing Y or N. And that's happening at line 640 where we're catching a value or a string from in key into the K dollar string. And then we're testing that string. And if it is Y, we're going to go to line 140, which will start the game again. If the in string value that is saved into the K dollar variable string, if that is uh, not N, we are just looping back up to the end string. So if you press N, it will end the game by just dropping down to the next line, which is 999, where we have the end statement. If it is yes, it's going to 140. Okay, there's a quick summary of how uh, Snake Game written completely in basic for the TSR80 level two basic. Okay, thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed.